I came up with this little paragraph. Human beings are emotional creatures that, that perform best when they're passionate. And uh, that's pretty, pretty simple. That's the thing when you come to college. Are you really doing what you love? All the time it's give or take. No one can say that they completely love what they do, but you know, it's all you suffer so that you can be happy eventually. And that's just kind of the mentality that I can't find myself to like or embrace. But uh, when we talk about personalities, being one of the herd, you know, people want to fit in, but at the same time, people want to stand out, and it all depends on the spectrum where you're at, of course. I'm a performer, so there's not a little bit in me that wants to fit in, hence the gold tuxedo, and etc. No sarcasm, y'all. Yeah, laugh. Stupid. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, the point of this slide is that when you find something that you're passionate about, like me, it's prop comedy. And it's a little bit easier to get prepared for things. I'm excited yeah. for the props. I don't even know what they are. I'm so excited. Yeah. <laughs> and disclaimer, we were going to get together and run this, but he had to get called for a, a different... Uh, yeah, you had to fill in for someone. Yeah. Like, he's a hero, long story short. All right. Moving on. Okay. So one thing I've noticed about human beings in my short time on Earth is that we have ridiculously high standards. I got a, just a picture saying, trust me, I'm a doctor. And this is the kind of thing that uh, in human beings there's this ethos mentality where the more time you spend and more money you spend getting an education, and then you can consider yourself worth uh, greater. But I've never understood that because I have met people in my own profession with multiple degrees that are no better than I am, just a lot more money, a lot more time spent into something, and it's just, I don't like the whole pay your dues mentality because there's so much more to performing. And in every other trade, it's not about how much time you can suffer, it's about your performance in the trade, and that's kind of something that I, that's what that's about. When you set such high expectations, like when you go into a date with a gorgeous woman, <laughs> Wait, is that a recording? Yeah, that's my best buddy, I didn't tell him that he's going to be in this. But, uh, yeah, the, the higher your standards, the more that you can risk being, you know, completely battered and beaten up emotionally. But that's just the beautiful thing in life, is if you don't take any time, bold gambits or gamble with something you want, well, then it's never going to be worth it anyway, because it's just predictable and boring. Okay, academic priorities is something I always talk about, because I have never been a good student. I hate school, my life's a mess, and it stresses me out, but being melancholy ain't what I'm about. Uh, but if I can do the, the music side of things, then I kind of love it. But these general classes, I always say when there's 7 billion people in the world, why do I have to do math? Someone else can do math. Someone else can do science. And that's what, what I don't like. <laughs> Suppression of your passion for the sake of a career. Can anyone relate to that little sentence? Yeah. Especially you medical folks, you engineering folks. How often are you actually in the field doing something? But how often are you comparing dick sizes to your classmates <laughs> and you're trying to impress your faculty? And I think that's just wrong. Can we get a couple examples of like some things that you guys would do if money was no option in life? Like if you do anything in the world, just shout out, pop Travel, yeah, travel, bake, yeah. Bake? I'll be able to travel. Loud and clear. Cool. All right, really quick too. Um, does anybody know who? who just if I can just. Do you know who uh, Gary V is? Yeah. Anybody follow Gary V? Who's Gary V? Vaynerchuk. He, he's the. He's really a, like a motivational speaker, but he's very blunt. Very blunt, very direct. I resonate a lot with him. But one of his main philosophies that he spreads is to enjoy what you do and like pursue your passions. So if you're a lawyer, and it's all about in his realm, social media and content you create. So if you're somebody who loves law and you're a lawyer, then like. Go ahead and do, be a lawyer, do law, and make that money. But if you're someone who's a lawyer, but you love golf, then like pursue golf, post about golf, make golf like content. That's just something that in this realm in 2019, almost 2020, we're pursuing this digital age where like people are making money based off of their passions just for taking a picture of it. I'm trying to get on that game. I don't know about y'all. I'm not an influencer or nothing, but maybe I can play golf and take pictures of it. I don't know. All right, so get this. If you're a relatively competent person, maybe you know average competency in your trade, and you go up against someone who you think might be taller, more handsome, more qualified, more whatever. <laughs> and you're in a race. <laughs> run with me. And when you start to run with someone that you're pretty intimidated by, what do you do? If you start slow to down. fall behind. You slow down, you get When you let confidence beat you, then of course, uh -oh. you're the one with the trophy. 
Oh, thank you. What a lot of people don't know is you don't always know what baggage someone's carrying, and nobody really knows how to measure your success. Oh <laughs> when you measure yourself by someone else, that's what kind of does it. Where's my ruler? Oh, also, you never really know what kind of baggage and weight someone's carrying. Oh. But sometimes you need a lot more. Yo! Sometimes Wait, you were running with that arm? That's not even fair. You're right. That message. <laughs> <laughs> message received. Okay. Let's move on. That's cool. All right. Oh, yeah. Give her a click. So we talk about priorities. These are the things that are optional activities, but I want everyone to think about this because we're in this technological era where in two seconds you could be looking at the best cat video in the world or something and really distract yourself. So can anybody add to this list? These are optional things. Netflix, YouTube, Space, and all TV, video games, eating, anything, what you got? Hormones are not an optional activity. Well, if you if you choose to spend all your money on dates, that's kind of where I was going with that. I'm one of what about bathing? I thought that was a required thing. Bathing? You ain't got to bathe before you go to class. <laughs> bathing is a privilege. Most of these are supposed to be funny. But, uh, but if you guys thought what well, you see you that, you don't want to go over here and smell like a, a can of You should. That. Think about it. You what do you want in life? If your one goal is to be on class at time and you're regularly not on class at time, what's more important? Showering? Nope. Yes. Smelling good for your classmates? Not much or looking good for your future employer? That's the kind of thing about it. Ideally, we can make time for both. Ideally. But, yeah, when you talk about productivity, you can cut these out. But the purpose of this slide is, of course, self-forgiveness is important. Mm -hmm. Does anybody in here struggle with feelings like they have like a priority they have to meet, and then they don't meet it, and then they feel guilty about it? Yeah. Especially in this job. Some quick examples for things red slide. Bulletin boards. Bulletin boards. If I don't call out for the job, I always feel like so bad. Like, even if I'm, like, dead tired, like, I call out, like, I know I'm going to call out, I just feel like, man, like, I could do that right now. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. That's probably the way humans beings should be programmed. But not everybody likes their job, and that just kind of goes into the passion thing. You're doing something you don't love, flipping burgers or whatever it may be. And it's not, it's not always easy to do stuff. I put productivity on here twice because I wanted one to be kind of hard ass looking at all these things like, oh, it's optional, you don't need it. And then the second time for, you're going to watch YouTube. You're going to go gamble, you're going to go have pets and all these things that are going to, you know, hopefully enhance your life in a different way. Even though if time wise it might not seem like it's logical. Okay, we can move on. Okay, intrinsic motivation. This is one of my favorite words. Because intrinsic means it just comes from inside yourself, right? So how about we get a couple examples of intrinsic motivation? Give me a hand. When no one wants to be your friend. Yes. Context on that picture, this was CPR training, and somebody thought it was funny when I was hugging the CPR. <laughs> <laughs> and I saved his life, by the way, so he's welcome. Where are you at now? I don't know. Okay, so something that motivates you intrinsically. Say... Yeah, give me an example. Doing better than you did yesterday. Better girl. That's good. That's healthy. That's what I like to hear. Zachary's got something. No, you? Competitiveness? Yeah, absolutely. If you can harness something that's already naturally inside you, that's just so logical and great. In the back. Getting to check things off my list. That'd be great. That'd be That's a week. Great. Self-improvement. Nice. Nice. Like the good feeling when the assignment's finally done. That's what I like to hear. Intrinsic motivation is the stuff that comes from inside you, which is way more powerful than, I mean, how many can relate to this? If someone compliments you a hundred times a day and you just pass it off, but then when someone gives you an absolute out of the ball, out of the box compliment, well, that actually matters. But complimenting yourself doesn't really do anything unless, because it's all sincere from you, right? You're biased, you're way harder on yourself than other people are on you. Typically, it kind of depends, but, uh, yeah, the, the point is to have your own back in this life, because that's the best way to live your life. Quick, quick, like, poll. What feels better? And this can be, like, different for everybody. For you to get complimented on, like, your appearance and, like, the superficial outside stuff, or someone saying, wow, you're really nice, you're really awesome, you're, you're a good person, intrinsic inner stuff. And it's okay if you prefer one or the other or both. Or... I think being complimented on your intellect is, like, way more important, because looks will always fade, but your, like, your mind really will always fade. Like, Get dementia, but like that's different. <laughs> <laughs> Facts. I gotta call on a volunteer from the audience here. Who's the strongest person in here? Who's got the biggest, toughest muscles? You think it's you? You think it's you? I'm looking at that six foot twenty. Randy, Randy, Alright, I'll give you ten seconds to fight over it. Someone real tough come up here. 
Sometimes when you're ringed out and there's nothing left to give, you can't expect anymore. You can't pour from an empty cup, you can't squeeze from an empty tube, toothpaste. So this ties into the whole self-care thing. Is it better to go buy a new tube of toothpaste and spend your three forty nine or whatever? Or would it be better to have a regenerating thing of toothpaste so you always got paste ready to go? That's what it is. That's how it feels like when you're confident. And when you believe that you deserve the rest. And you go into your next day feeling rested and prepared, and that's just a beautiful thing. How many people in here have heard like that pour your cup metaphor scenario out a lot, like in terms of like your energy? Heard a lot. Cool. So what's something that we can do to combat that, or like make sure that like your your energy is back up? Self care, right? Cool. What's something else? I think priority is a big thing. So if you make yourself a priority, then you're more likely to stay on top of it. Make yourself up. Pour your cup for yourself first. Um, I'll say, like Steve said, like the other um, half of the productivity, like make sure that you are doing things like watching YouTube or Netflix to so, like kind of rejuvenate between yes. whatever else we do. Mm -hmm. Space it out, especially when you're learning. Give yourself a break so it gets into your memory. Yeah. Ryan, you guys? I'll, I'll always say listen. Okay. Like, I don't like the human attention. If, uh, something that I want y'all to be aware of is the fact that all of you in this room are RAs, so thus you're automatically part of a community. So I'm sure that sometimes if you're on staff and you see that one of your staff members is struggling, maybe their cup's a little empty, maybe take some water from your own cup and pour it in there. And then maybe one day in the future they'll do the same for you. So you have a system, and sometimes if you have a system that reciprocates with one another, you guys can have each other's back and nobody will have an empty cup. Purpose of this is you're all the captain of your own ship, don't go down. Shout out to Jaylene for the toothpaste. Let's go to the next slide. Okay, so this is something that sounds been a little important to me. I'm one of these people who values humor over everything. Because I think humor is something that can, you know, repair anything. You know, they say laughter is the best medicine, and there might be truth to that. I'm not a scientist. Is that but you? Falling? Absolutely. Oh my God. <laughs> That's a dumb little meme from a failed stunt I did. I don't remember wow. when that was. Ankles. Okay. Right. But so, this is something that's, uh, you know, people value being thick skinned when you like, argue with other people, and being heartless is seen as romanticized and whatever. But I'm talking about thick skin for yourself. This is why I, when we really talk about self forgiveness. Sometimes in life, you're going to offend people, you're going to make mistakes, you're going to do stupid stuff, and you're going to feel like an ass hat. Throws hat. Throws hat. <laughs> but. It's important to move on, because you're not doing yourself a favor if you're dwelling on everything from the past. Humor is not evil, and that's something that all my life I've been struggling to think with, because I've always been the ballsy type of guy who'll say a joke even if it doesn't have a chance, just cause, you know, I think it might help, so, yeah. And uh, forgiveness and pettiness, everyone has an option when you're upset or mad at somebody. You can forgive them, or you can forgive them Petty wise, and then not and let it drag out even more, or you can just not forgive them at all. And I think that's the worst one. You're not even acknowledging that they are trying to be a part of your life. Mm -hmm. Okay, we can move. Real quick, does anybody have that moment when they're like in bed and they're just like thinking about the last ten years of their life, and they get yeah. embarrassed about something they did in eighth grade, yeah. <laughs> and you feel it all over again, and you're just like, oh. <laughs> yeah, right? Let that hurt go. Self forgiveness. That's, 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 that's not a hard thing. All right, isn't it? And that's why we do this presentation. Exactly. This is a part of the program where it's going to get a little real. But before I start, hey boss. Before I start this, but I want you all to think. Don't think of me as a comedian who's 
trying to make you laugh up here. This is a part I want you to think deep inside yourself. I want you to think of a regret you have. Just a simple one. Yeah, Something simple. you might miss. You didn't go to a class. You didn't tell a girl you liked her. You didn't apply for an internship. You didn't approach something with confidence. These are the kind of things that most people go through every day that can, they can forgive themselves. But then let's go a little deeper. When you think of the word abyss, what do you think about it? You don't have to answer. I think of you know, deep darkness, and this relates completely to emotions. There's things in this world that are going to fuck you up. If you've ever watched somebody die or held a grandparent's hand as they depart, that's kind of one way to really get you to that place. But imagine if you knew someone was suicidal, but you were just so busy and you couldn't, you figured it, you wouldn't be any help when you were all busy and bitter, too busy for them, and then something happens. Well, the fact of the matter is that is their decision and you have to eventually forgive yourself if you were their friend or not. And that's what's really tough about the uh, emotional side of self-forgiveness is that it's not always easy. Sometimes, you know, I've been on both ends of the spectrum where people have said, I've been in a rough place and if you wouldn't have talked to me when you did, anything could have happened. And I've also been on the spectrum where, you know, I asked a girl out, we went on a date and she didn't like me and we drifted apart for months and then before you know it something bad happened to her and I just would have thought if I would have been more evident, if I would have been a little bit cooler, I might have been able to save her life and that's the kind of stuff that eats at you forever. If you can't forgive yourself. So, we're all emotional beings. I want to do a little thing first. Look up in the air if you consider yourself pretty emotional. Look down if you think you're tough. Is there a middle point? Yeah, you can look forward if it's <laughs> All right. So what you're seeing is, what you're seeing, if you look around here, there's a lot of emotional people in this world, and especially in this room. And uh, what I, I thought of this thing called the Sigmund Freud wannabe philosophy. This is the kind of thing, how many times when you're sad and you express a lie and you say, how are you doing? Great. Fucking great. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, oftentimes that's partially your fault because you're not actually letting people know what's up. If you actually say... Yeah, I'm having a horseshit day, god damn it. Then somebody's gonna be like, oh geez, well that person's not usually in this mentality, so then maybe you're gonna help them because they're gonna start to think higher of themselves that they can be a friend. Because everyone wants friends, right? Even in the social media crazed era, it's important to have friends, people who have your back. Really quick, I want you guys to self-reflect, right? We all know that we go around, like Steve said, and someone says, hey, how you doing? Oh, I'm fine, I'm great, oh, I'm good. Usually like the default answer is, I'm good, and you keep mm -hmm. it moving. What would you think it'd be like if we lived in a world with like people who didn't do that? How do you think you'd react if you were walking by, you saw a stranger hold the door open for you, saying, hey, how you doing? Well, I'm feeling like crap today, thanks for asking. Do you think you'd be the kind of person that would react well to that and be like, oh, tell me more, how can I help you? Or do you think you'd be like, what the fuck? Yeah. Just keep moving, like, you know? That's think something. about the kind of person that you want to be, especially like for others, friends, or even strangers. Yeah, there's two things I think about when I think of this topic. One is confrontation. A lot of people really struggle, struggle, struggle with their fears. And that's just, you know, sometimes it, it ain't up to you to make everyone else's day, and that's just true. And especially in Jersey, you guys self-advocate better than a lot of other places in the country. I bet you care about yourself, and that's a beautiful thing. Don't ever, when people call you cynical, just take it with a grain of salt, because it really is beautiful. I know people where I come from that'll sit there with their emotional baggage and get just hammered on emotionally, and they're just too stoic to say anything, and I think it's beautiful that... From what I've noticed, people care a little bit more about their own feelings here, because that's way healthy. And uh, Sigmund Freud wannabe philosophy, I want to touch back on this. This is a concept of when someone is in a situation or a place emotionally, and you start giving them advice. Anybody ever been so sad and just not want to hear no one's advice? Sometimes you just want someone to pat you on the back and say, Oh, you emotional boy, I love you anyway. <laughs> Sometimes you got to do that for yourself. Oh boy, you emotional boy. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> Forgiveness <laughs> is so important. Okay, we can move on. Let's talk a little bit about stress. Okay, so stress is an optional. If you've got goals in life, you're going to be stressed. And I hope you appreciate all the 
memes packed in here and the good pics of Cage you know what I mean? But Anybody remember that from uh, the yeah. 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 <laughs> so, yeah. Let's change gears a little bit. I want to know, instead of the sad side of y'all, I want to hear the angry. What's something that pisses you off? Jerry. Think about something. Jer? Myself. <laughs> Good. That's the answer I was hoping we'd get later, because that's the most powerful one. Yeah, yeah. My biggest thing is when I, um, when someone tells me something about myself, and then I fix it, and they keep telling me that you're doing the same thing when I know I fixed it. Mm. Like, it's my, my biggest pet peeve. Mm. Like, I know I worked on myself, and then you're trying to say that I keep doing something when I don't do it. I like that. Yes, exactly. And it's like, they're just being blind. I'm like, you do what you want. But I, that's like my biggest thing. Yeah, it is, it's definitely hard to notice one. Mm -hmm. If it's not inside you. But it's so, it's so easy for a human being to know, this is what I've done. But unless you actually ask someone, how have you been trying to improve yourself? Then maybe they wouldn't know. Maybe they still like you and they're good people. <laughs> yeah, I think you were first. Um, when uh, someone's like, given the opportunity to be close to somebody um, and really like love them and care for them and then instead they turn around and like ruin their life. Like that mm. oh, wow. just, That's a shame. It's hard to do it. Yeah, when you're affected by drugs and things where it influences their decisions and then you feel so hurt by someone's decision, it's never easy. All right then. When residents rip down my door decks after I spent like two hours making them. Oh. Scrap, scrap forgiveness. That's a strong sign right there. I feel that in my soul. It's crazy. You, man. Um, I kind of hate when people try to try to um, speak on something that they don't know. Like, mm -hmm. like you can be going like you can be like lashing out or like you just having one of those days and they just judge you, yeah. but they don't know what you're going through before the fact and then they feel bad after that. It was like, well, yeah. you should have asked. That's always tough. You. Um, so I feel like when someone talks is like really important, like even even if it isn't important, like I really don't like how people can't grasp the idea of not talking. Like I feel like something is like, something like that is super simple and like the fact that you can't comprehend is just like don't talk. It's like especially now, you don't my auto you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is uh, yeah. Uh, I don't know who's next, Nia. Yeah, the one thing I've noticed, we're in a rebuttal society, so the, the concept of agree to disagree is kind of gone. It's all about who can shred or who can one-up the next person, and I don't think that's really productive. But one thing I do want to note on is when I talk about what pisses you off, what makes you angry, and people address it, it's so sweet and productive. I think most of you all are good people, because I don't think you would self-reflect so deeply if you weren't. Chris? I was going to say kind of similar to what both uh, you just said, kind of like when uh, people listen to you, but rather to like respond rather than actually listening to what mm -hmm. you're saying, like they need to bubble out, like what does they mean rather than actually taking it in. Now here's one thing that helps me with stress. Uh -oh. Pop this around, uh -oh. pass it around, really give her, get rid of some anger, get rid of some <laughs> anguish. <laughs> and while you do it, think of all the things that piss you off. Why do you give her a crush? <laughs> That's what I do. Yeah, my dear. Um, my thing is when. Like, let's say you're listening to someone's situation, and then, like, when it's your turn to say something about yourself, it's like, every, uh, like, when people minimize your situation to, like, make theirs more important yeah. or something like that, like, I hate that, because it's like, talk about yeah, listening. and it's like, if I'm talking to you about something about me, like, why you gotta switch it to you, like, and, like, make it everything about me. Mm -hmm. He said pop one if you don't follow directions. No, 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 pop as many as you want. I'm gonna break yeah, that's the one I need to pop. <laughs> I don't know. He's a psychic, that's all. Heavy eyes! <laughs> <laughs> well, let's uh, go to the next slide. So when we talk about stress, we say stress isn't optional. If you got goals in life, stress is gonna happen, you're gonna want to self throw. And uh, but what, is, what is optional is happiness. You can choose to be happy, you can pursue the things, and you can be proud. A lot of people you know are perfectionists, especially some of you good students. Yeah, raise your hand if you consider yourself confident academic. Yeah, you got the 4.20s and the et cetera GPAs. Yeah. See, I don't see a lot of hands up, but that's the stuff I like because a lot of times when you're really gifted academically, that's when it's hard to have your own, you know, get up and go, which is something you learn from suffering traumatically all your life. Try to 
compensate mentally for whatever. And that's just part of being a student is, you know, you get her done. Get her done. How many people here, another quick poll, consider themselves to be morning people? You're a morning person. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. And how many people how many people are like night people, like night owls? Yeah. Um, okay, yeah. as am I. Um, so if you're a morning person, oh no, if you're a night person, right? Do you wish you could be a morning person? Do you feel guilty like going to bed at night really, really late and then like trying to struggle to get up early in the morning and all that stuff? Yeah. Do we empathize with that? Does that resonate? Yeah. What about you morning people? Do you feel any guilt about that? About like waking up early, really early? Is there anything bad that comes with that type of situation? I feel like I have more time. <laughs> you have more time in the day? Okay. Do you get to sleep in an appropriate amount, like uh, an appropriate hour? Yeah, I got a bedtime. Yeah, bedtime. Okay. Good. I feel like college begins to make me a new person. And then like I'm about to graduate in May and like I wanted to change that because after I graduate, like it's not gonna be college anymore. Uh -huh. So I like took my winter break to change that schedule and now I become a morning person and I get way more things done in the daytime because at night I'm just tired. I don't get things done like as efficiently as I would want to. Yeah, gotcha. sometimes the best thing you can do is just go to bed because you'll be more productive in the morning. Because some people's minds are trained to be right at four in the morning as when it all starts. There. Yeah. Um, I think what I've noticed in college too is that everybody's always complaining like, I don't get enough sleep, I don't get enough sleep. But I think they're like, you're the reason you're, you're not getting enough sleep sometimes because we're all struggling with really difficult majors and times when we have like 30 deadlines to hit at the end of the week. But if you're sleeping, if you're partying Thursday, Friday, Saturday, yeah, you don't have time because that's like 72 hours that you just wasted. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. Not, you know, like I think if you went out, I, so I do think life. that like if you were partying, you need to do that in college. But it's not like it's not like you can say like I don't get enough sleep, I don't have enough time when like you're not putting in the time for your academics while also taking care of yourself. Like, yeah. I don't know. So the reason why I like like to pose that is because there's an important caveat to like self forgiveness. Self forgiveness is the first step of like getting over yourself and like oh my god I suck oh my god like why am I my own worst enemy blah blah. After that step comes to be proactive, solution oriented. What am I gonna do to change that? And like I can like resonate with a lot of you. I am like a really like I'm a bad oh my god night person. I will sit until like three four a.m. just chilling like doing nothing. Why am I not in bed? Like, I'll just be sitting like okay. <laughs> no seriously. Um, and I've, and I've, I've told a lot of people this already, but like one of my resolutions this year is to like really become a morning person. So I took the minute where I'm like, you know what, this is who I am, I understand that, I'm forgiving myself for my actions, but now I'm going to try to be intentional with how I change that in that specific like setting and that goal of my life. The next little topic I want to talk about is something that's really near and dear to me, vocal reinforcement. Anybody know what that is? So when we talk about confidence, something that's free. There's one thing that really helps for me, and that's when you actually have like a sticky note or something that you said to help help yourself. Because like I said earlier, uh, basic compliments from other people doesn't do as much as when you actually say something from yourself, like, Steve, you look good in a gold tuxedo. Let's hear some examples of vocal reinforcement. Someone tell me something. For your, you talk to yourself, right? <laughs> yeah, well, this, that's what I'm talking about. That's one of those compliments that I appreciate. I love it. I'm going to write it down and then, you know, get all gooey later. But uh, yeah, what's the example? I am beautiful. I am intelligent. I'm blessed by Allah and I can do anything in this world that I want to do. That's what I'm talking about. If you've ever been in Hada's office, you'll see just how healthy it is in there. There's so many great things to look at. Yeah, do it. If you're struggling, come over. Whitney's where it's at. <laughs> Air conditioning, me. What else do you need? <laughs> okay. And uh, yeah, this is a quote I really like by Al Franken. All opinions aside, this is one hell of a quote. I'm good enough, I'm smart enough, and doggone it, people like me. That's something that, you know, he said sarcastically. But, you know, people do. Even if you're terrible. Like, you know, your mom might like you. Oh, yeah. That's the Wow, of course, that's all situational. But yeah, the point of this is vocal reinforcement. If you have your own back, it is free and it can help. I want to whip out this maze here. So, this is something I got a little prepared. Let's throw this on the wow. table real quick. Let's make it vertical so everyone's back can see it. Yeah. That's what that looks like. <laughs> so this maze represents the trials and tribulations of life. So I'm going to have Cation go through this. We start right here. Yeah. I want you, what I want you to do is hit every dead end because it goes in. This. Okay. So life can be amazing, but other times it's a maze. Sometimes you're going to go into this, and what's the first thing you hit when you're ready? First dead end is time management. 
When you have time management problems, how do you feel? God damn it, I'm not good enough. Why wasn't I organized? Why wasn't it this or that or whatever? Oh, yeah. Another, another dead end. Career path concerns. Career path concerns, that's something, yeah. Have you ever think, where, where is your why? What's your purpose? All that. I'm sure you've heard the why a lot. That's something that kind of pisses you off. Maintaining friendships, so that's social stress. Yeah, social stress. Staying professional, that's something I struggle with. You know, I'm an entertainer. I want to have fun when I'm out there. You run into financial struggles. That's tough, then you get emotional baggage and your mom's dying and then you keep things positive and you don't want to rep a bad image on yourself and then vendettas and grudges, sometimes you can't really fix that to what other people think of you and of course health is just something that can really put a damper on things. And then of course when you got all this going on and it's getting really heated and you're super stressed, all you can do is wonder, how the hell am I going to keep all these things together? Well, first what you got to do is put it on the kind of, when your life's too heated, you put it on a cooling bed. And think to yourself, okay, there's a better way to do this. There's a better way to keep it all together. Find whatever your glue stick is. And when you got all these different sheets of paper with things in the frying pan piss and you off and glue them together, and if that doesn't work, then take a stick. Oh, there you go. I'm loving the metaphors. The metaphors is just, it's, uh, it's kind of dumb, but it's simple. You just got to find out. I hear that in the back. I just want to make sure everyone's paying attention to this lovely prop work. <laughs> yeah, I know in the back is a little tough, but keep it together. <laughs> you can. Keep it together. I like you. All good. Let's click to the next one. Here. All right. Let's talk a little bit about emotions. What is everybody's favorite emotions? Shout them out for me, yeah. The chocolate emotion, it happens. Hunger, that's a thing. Sadness, that's your favorite one? I like sadness too, because it grows. It helps you grow, it helps you think outside the box. I know happiness is usually better when you're thinking, damn, I was in a real dark place yesterday. Real quick question, just to pose this. Real quick question. And please, this is a space of honesty, and we can chop this up if you want. But who here feels or has been taught that like emotions or like showing your emotions is a sign of weakness? A lot of people. But you've, you've seen that, you've heard that stigma? Okay. Can someone like say some examples, like where they learned that from, or like where they got that from? Um, mine's like kind of depressing, but when I was little, uh, my mom always told me that crying never got anything done. So like whenever I was crying, she was like, you need to stop, because like that's not helping you solve your problems. <laughs> so like now if I want to start crying, my brain's like, don't cry, like that's not helping you solve your problems. Okay, yeah. and how do you feel afterwards that you don't give yourself that natural organic release? Uh, horrible. <laughs> 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 if I had a prop myself, I have like a whole soda can and just Because at the end of the day, when you keep those emotions inside yeah. and you don't give it that natural release, it gets bottled up. I'm sure you guys have heard that metaphor, that saying before. And when that bottle gets filled and there's pressure, 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 it might as well be a Coke can that you're shaking because then one person might trip you up or like maybe do something that annoys you like this much and then your reaction is this big because that's it. It's the last straw. We talked about it. Yeah. I had a high school teacher uh, tell me and something that was really special. Teenage uh, careers are literally There's a, we talk a lot about negative emotions and how to get out of a bad place, but what we don't ever really seem to talk about is how can you keep it up when you're in a good one? Keep it up. Oh, keep up that positive. Keep it up. Keep up that positive. Keep it up. Keep it up. Don't grab it up. Keep 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 it up. Wow. And that's okay, and that's part of life. We're gonna get through it. Back up to the front. Back up to the front. All right. One thing that comes with the confidence is reality. And uh, is she by my ah, she dropped it. Oh no, she keep up the positivity. It's not always easy to stay positive, but if you can, it's a great reward. But also, if you are positive, you ought to share it with people because it's sometimes hard to come from within. But when you can get positivity to come from within, that's something that's perfect. You can improve the whole world. Can you imagine how good the world would be when someone was down and out, you just went and picked them up? Yeah, I mean, it's not that hard. I want to talk a little bit about friendship. So, making friends, you know, it's, you can get into social anxieties. I know I'm a little bit bolder than an average bear. But sometimes all you really gotta do is toss a ribbon to someone 
Someone will catch it. And you connect it. Really all it is, you do something weird, she's going to remember for the rest of her life now that that dumb blonde kid with the gold tuxedo tossed her a ribbon and then represented how they were connected. That was deep, y'all. I just want you to understand it was really deep. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that was like, deep. I, I got, I got, that was so deep. I got everything. I'm shook. Mm -hmm. Oh, jeez. I just realized I'm bleeding. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. I think I stabbed myself with a pen on accident. Okay, we're going to finish this presentation. Alright guys, hang with us. We only got like 10 minutes left. Spectrum of altruism. This is something I came up with. There's these four types of people. None of these are healthy. But I want you to look at this thing. The cynic. This is someone who sees someone down and out and goes, ah, it's not going to help me. I don't want to volunteer because that's not going to help me. I don't want to volunteer my time. I don't want to, I don't want to worth, I don't want to risk getting hurt myself because of someone else's baggage and bullshit. And if you got a giver, that's someone that's also unhealthy. That's the type of person who doesn't value himself at all. And just, you know, gives all their time to others, all their energy, all their love. And that ain't healthy either. When you look at the runner, that's someone, you know, if they get inconvenienced by something, then they do something. But they'd much rather run away and avoid the confrontation. I'm one of those people who's probably somewhere around tenetites, which is a word I invented, meaning you're tentative, but it's fine. You're willing to lend a hand. And when you realize that there's a situation on your hands, you do your job. You do what you were put on this earth for. I believe my life purpose is to enhance the lives of others. I'm a musician. And also, you guys as RAs, you're going to deal with a lot of emotional baggage. You're going to deal with a lot of BS. Do your best. So uh, we can go to the next one for a time here. OK, so the dead horse philosophy. Oh, consistency, different one. OK. So sometimes it's difficult to see what is healthy. When we talk about the spectrum of cynic and the giver, uh, who really deserves your time? For example, if you've ever been in a horseshit relationship where you had a nice narcissist on the other end of things and they really didn't value you, you're giving all their time and all your effort into it, and they just weren't budging, claim they love you, but you never really, you got to be honest with yourself because that's not healthy. And it's the same way with friendships, relationships, even your professional relationships, if you've got a user or something, help them educate them. You know, call it out if someone's just really using you. Who's ever been a victim of being too nice? Yeah. Uh, and again, just to keep it on theme, who feels bad afterwards when they feel taken advantage of? Yeah. And who blames themselves? Yeah. Okay, cool. Self-forgiveness. That's also free. So at the end of the day, like we talked about before, establishing those boundaries and like how much you can give and how much you can pour out of your water really goes a long way in like your own personal well-being. All right. And keeping that consistent. Picture this. Nobody knows what to do in life. Everything's tough. You're on an Easter egg hunt and everyone's searching hardcore for what's the right thing to do. And then a golden egg you find just drops out of the sky right in front of you. Why don't you open it up and read what's in there, Jake? No, I'm so excited. <clears throat> <laughs> I am valuable. And that's all there is to it. Once you realize that, then it should be easy. You can't let someone take advantage of your self-worth and your time and your love and your energy unless it's held for over here too. So it's all on a spectrum of loving yourself, love others. Let's go to the next one. Yeah, dead horse philosophy is it something. When you kick a dead horse, that's not really... The bear trap, it ties into what I was just talking about. When you're in a bear trap, I don't know how many of you are familiar with trap, uh, trapping, but yeah, when an animal's in there and their ankle's caught in the trap, they have a tough decision to make. Do I chew through it and rip off my foot and hope that it heals up and I have a quality of life, or do you just sit there and bleed out? Well, when you're in a tough situation and you don't know what to do, the answer is to never just sit there and bleed out with a smile on your face. It's, Accepting the pain. When you're in a rough relationship or a friendship and it's toxic on you, chew through your own foot. Of course, it's not this intense, but think it's uh, exaggerated to make a point. Okay, repel the predictable. That's something I put on there because that's something I don't struggle with at all. A lot of times you fall into that basic thing and that doesn't really do you a favor when you're... Yeah, like what I really appreciate is the Mario and Luigi cats out there. They've been keeping my mood up this whole time. I love that. And... Uh, you know, it's free to express yourself. Everyone's got good ideas, but you shouldn't bottle them up. I will right, we'll go to the next one. Okay, something that's uh, really important in life, take a step back. Realize that you've got friends out there if you got the time. Shout out to the Whitney staff for balling with me. And uh, stress wins when you don't show up to play. 
It's just like a sport. If you show up tired and didn't sleep at all, are you going to be able to be a good basketball player? Probably not. You want to go in there with confidence and energy. And uh, a lot of times people view self-care as something that's like a laziness. I think downtime can be healthy in moderation, just like all things. Uh, humans are social creatures. You aren't alone. So when you look around this room and you make eye contact with other people, instead of looking away real quick going, oh God, I made eye contact, why don't you go here for it? Something like that. Let's go to the next one. And this is my <laughs> conclusion here. You want to grab me those sunglasses over there? Sunglasses. <laughs> All right. Why don't you put them on? Oh, me? Okay, cool. So we talk about confidence. We talk about self-forgiveness. The ideal mentality in life is someone, you know, who can go into a situation, balls to the walls, free, and if you screw up and make an ass out of yourself, forgive yourself. Because, you know, most of the time they're happy that you went out of your comfort zone because they didn't have to. And it's a beautiful thing. When I talk about myself and my confidence, as egotistical as it sounds, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This, this blue candle doesn't go out with the water because it's RLUH approved electronics. <laughs> Can you imagine if you were that type of candle that never went out, if no one could put you out, if no one could get you down? That's the type of person I want to be, the one who inspires others and gets inspired regularly, evaluating myself, but not to the point where it's unhealthy. And eventually my future is going to be so bright that even your dark sunglasses Hey. Oh, wait, you have Everybody do better, be better every day that you live. Work to comprehend each other. It's a lot easier than you think. Just take the time, spend the time, and enjoy each other's company. Because eventually you're going to look like that one day, and you're going to have a lot more time on your hands, but it's going to be harder to keep that friendship. So just do your best. Forget the rest. P90X mentality. Yeah. And before I leave you, I want to leave you with one little more analogy. The ball pit analogy, this is something I invented because my mother was the type to be really punctual. She'd say, you got 10 minutes, son, get in the ball pit and have a blast. And I would, but of course, whenever it's time to leave, you know, I wouldn't want to leave. But imagine this time in the ball pit, right when you jump in there, that's when you're born. Or right when your mother says it's time to leave, that's when you get your hospice sentence and it's time to go. Spend every moment you can in that ball pit. Enjoying your life with your friends that you might never see again, because those childhood people, they are happy, they want to live their life, and they want to enjoy it just like we can go on. Yeah. Thank you, everybody.